What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hey guys, it's Harry Haas here, and today I'm gonna to be doing a video on when I personally stop longing. This has been kind of coming up a little bit, so I thought I would make a video on it. First of all, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Uh, this is purely for uh, entertainment or educational purposes. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's not investment advice, even if it may seem like it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Um, this topic has been coming up a little bit. So basically the way this video is going to work is I'm going to give two trade examples showing how I kind of used uh, what I'm talking about here. I'm going to also go over my day two rules because there were there was a day, pl day two play this week, AKER, where uh, a couple people did end up getting trapped on it, unfortunately. And I'm going to show some rules on how to prevent getting trapped on a day two stock also so it's kind of a it's kind of like uh, just a, a mixed video uh, it's more so just how to long safely so i thought that i'd start out with uh, the the window of opportunities during my day so basically what i've found and how i've kind of found my p l kind of works is that in the morning between 9 30 and 9 45 is when i'm making probably most of my my money. It's when I'm sized in. Uh, it's when I am able to cal capture some of the good range at the open. And I, I, I find that between 9.30 and 9.45, I'm getting a lot of opportunities. It's where most of my money is being made. Now between 9.45 and 10.15, uh, I'm still seeing opportunities, but I'm trying to force less and I'm also starting to size down a little bit because I know that some money will be made between 9.45 and 10.15, but the, the quality of ideas that, that, are, that I'm coming up with in my head and the trades that I'm taking are, you know, they're getting significantly worse. So I'm just kind of aware of that because just with my personal stats, this time window is when I'm making the most of my money. This time window is where I'm, I'm still kind of making a little bit, but just not a crazy amount. Now between 10.15 and 10.30, this is really interesting, is when I get significantly less opportunities, or when I see significantly less opportunities. And this is a time frame that I know I'm likely to give back gains, I'm likely to try and, you know, all the emotional stuff that kind of comes in with trading. I'm saying to myself, oh, well, I could have made more on uh, an earlier play or I could have done something better or I could have done something different or oh I should be up more money or all those things that come into play so the this time I'm, I'm really cautious trading around 10 15 to 10 30. now 10 30 to noon is where it's either I'm getting no opportunities at all or we have a hot chicken play where I can size up a little bit more and take advantage of a zombie and that's kind of what I do if I don't see any good zombie opportunities or you know any stocks in play or stocks that uh, are not are not doing you know good volume. I'm probably going to walk if if I don't see what I like. And this time frame is kind of 50/50 for opportunities for me. I'm I'm either going to see something or I'm not. So I just thought that I'd kind of give a good window of opportunities during my day because a lot of people have kind of been asking me like, what's your day kind of like? Uh, can you run me by how many opportunities are you seeing a day? Or you know. Uh, I get a lot of questions like for first bounce, like when am I going to see the most opportunities or when do you like to hit the gas and then when do you like to slow down? So I thought that I'd kind of uh, just kind of show uh, what my day is kind of like according to my own statistics in the, in the, in the trading session. Uh, so now let's kind of get a little bit more into the, the video topic. So reasons why I stop long, longing, uh, reasons why I take profit, reasons why I walk away. This would probably come into more of the, the walking. So I know that at 10.30, I'm either, I need to walk by 10.30 in this type, type of time window, or I need to stay and keep trading. 
and that's basically kind of my own idea. Uh, it's just kind of what works for me. I know uh, after 10.30 is, is a time where longs can take control, but if there are no good stocks in play and no good opportunities, then I usually just will walk. So uh, basically reasons why I stop longing would be signs of backside. So any sign of backside or any sign of weakness and I like to go out and I'm going to show some examples. I think I have already shown some examples in prior videos of things like the death line, etc. where I don't like to long. But uh, so any signs of backside, you know, making it significantly harder to long. So if maybe every single every single pop is getting sold into, if we're getting a series of higher lows, if I'm seeing volume decrease, if I'm seeing the stock below VWAP, if I'm noticing that it's having a lot of trouble going higher, uh, heavy tape. Uh, now this is more of a kind of acquired skill. The more you trade, the more you'll kind of understand this. Because when I first started trading, I was like, oh, you know, any red on the tape and like this stock is definitely done. But that's not really what it means. Heavy tape is more so there's a lot of selling and every pop is kind of getting sold into. So it's basically kind of explained in this video and you'll kind of see, you'll notice. Death line. Um, this one, obviously, you can tell anyone who bought above this area is now trapped. So obviously the one time it pops, you're gonna have a ton of long traders just looking to get out, hoping just you know to minimize their loss as much as possible as it keeps climbing down. This one, where all longs are trapped and there's no lines left, this is kind of similar to this one as well, except this one's kind of like a downtrending stocks. These these stocks that downtrend, um, I know Alex talked about it. It's so funny because I made a video in my last video of you know longs to avoid and all the longs that I don't like and I was watching an MIC video and he's like I love those stocks that downtrend pre-market I'm like yeah well I don't like them because those aren't my type of pattern but it's funny how you can see uh, the stocks that I love are the stocks that you know Alex is like no nah, it's in the void and the stocks that I don't like Alex is like oh man this is a prime short setup and it's that's an example of longs working together and it's so funny because when Alex had a day where he made $62, that was a big day for me. But when Alex had a big day, it was a day where I made less. So it's kind of funny how the market uh, changes and how every day is not going to be a big day. So that's just something that I'd also point out as well. This is a day two rule I thought I would share. This is this video is more so kind of like a recap on this week and the almost last week as well because there were kind of a lot of things that were going on and there were a lot of lessons. So on day two, this is one rule that I thought I would share. And basically my rule on day two backside is, you know, any, especially day two as well, because day two, you know, it's been up for two days. So you should be kind of getting a, a higher time frame pullback. You should be looking to kind of, you know, there could be an offering. There are a lot of things that can happen day two. Day one, we know that the stock, if it is going to pump, that's the time for it. Day two, this is more the dump day. Day three, uh, I, I honestly will not touch. And so basically my rule for day two, any, any, any uh, backside I'm out, the reason being is that they can dump hard once the crowd starts bailing. This was actually a message to a member. It was a comment back to a member. And I said, sorry to hear about the offering and use it for a lesson for next time and you can develop rules around this. So I thought I'd kind of share this message comment that I had to a member because, you know, day twos, they're, they're very, very, very unpredictable. And this is kind of why I made this slide because I, I realized I never really talked about days, day two as much as uh, day one. So for day two, it must be the hot chick. It must be doing good volume. Uh, it must show signs of strength. It's got to be above VWAP. And I'm looking for a quick type of move. I'm not looking to get married on this play. It's not a hold. I'm not saying it's going to the moon. And I'm not, I'm not looking to... So the zombie hours kind of gets tricky with day two because with day one zombie hours, it's like, well, it hasn't really, sometimes it hasn't made its full move or sometimes it hasn't made its full pump. But when you're longing into, into zombie hours and the volume is fading on day two, the odds are very, they're, they're stacked against you. So on day two, I, I would not be looking to long into zombie hours. Like there might be one exception where we have a super low float and, you know, the stock's going crazy, but honestly, those happen like, like at most once every two or three months. So it's really important if you're just trading day to day for consistent gains every single day that, you know, you don't want to be trying to long into zombie hours if the stock is fading. The edge is just against you. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend trading new day two if you're new. And I wouldn't recommend trading day two in the pre-market or the afternoon. I know that we have some people who, who just 
trade at the open. We have some people who long pre-market. As Alex says, pre-market is really just FOMO. But we do have uh, some people, like if, if you're just really looking to scratch the itch pre-market, this is not the, the stock to be doing it on because you have a lot of offering risk. I also point this out, is that sometimes you can not predict an offering, but you can say, okay, now the odds really aren't in my favor for long. And you can you can kind of see this watching Chicago's videos on, on fundamentals. Like sometimes they'll have an S3, but it's not an effect. And they'll use that S3 to dump shares. I'm not really a fundamentals guru. I'm not really, you know, guru at anything for that matter. But uh, I'm not really, I'm not great at the fundamentals because day to day for me, it's not a, a very important part of my trading because I'm just trading technically off the lines. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know for sure. Uh, I'm always in chat. I'm always around. And uh, I'd just like to say uh, uh, thanks a lot to all the members for tuning in and watching. And uh, I'll be back next week with another video. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.